Welcome everyone to our Lunch and Learn. I am the uh, current board president of the Red River Valley Hospital Autism Network. My name is Joanne Hewitt. This is one of our summer activities. We have Lunch and Learn every third Thursday of the month, and in the summer we decided it would be fun to have activities where the kids can come to. The format for today <coughs> is we have a special speaker. He's a special friend. His name is Mr. Don Carey, and he's from North Dakota State University. And we kind of affectionately call him the bug. And we're going to find out in just a few minutes why that is. So I think I will let you introduce yourself. Anything else you'd like to tell us? Thank you. First of all, you've got to see my thumb. It's not a great looking thumb, but that's where I show stuff. Okay. Let me introduce myself one more time. My name is Doug here, North Dakota State University Anthropology Department. I'm an ophthalmologist. My name is Don Carey. I'm from North Dakota State University. Here's the big word Entomology Department. It's an entomologist, which means I do what for a living? Examine and do research on bugs. Exactly, yeah. And usually when I come into a group like this and say, okay, you guys get to sit there for the next 40 minutes while I talk about bugs, most kids kind of go, oh, who cares? You might fly a mosquito, you might see a pretty butterfly, but you probably don't work with insects very often. I change. Ah, it's not true. You guys run the insects every day. In fact, Zachary's house. Probably running into this one right now. See a little brown dot? And yeah. if you draw it out, if you draw it out, it looks like this. Oh, man. Not a man. It's a bucket shape for them. Maybe it'll be the right. Yes. No, so boy! Eel. In fact, it goes by the name of this little thing. It doesn't have a short name. It's got a really long name. Ready for this? Coleopterus and Ebriana Tribolium Confusum. <laughs> One more time. Coleopter tenebriana tribolium confusum. Most people call it a flower beetle. It's called a flower beetle because it lives in. <laughs> flower nope. This is not a flower beetle. This is a flower beetle. Oh, oh, oh. This yeah. is not a flower beetle. This is a flower beetle. Yeah, I yeah, I get it. Not the pretty not the pretty bouquet of flower. But the cooking oh. flower. Stuff they cook with. Yeah. See, I was right. It's not a flower beetle. It's a flower beetle. I, I, I this is an insect that's born, a, born in flower, grows up in flower, <laughs> goes to the bathroom flower, dies in flower. Oh. If you did anything made out of flour, here's the toast you had for breakfast. Flour. Pizza you're chewing on right now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we every once in a while we eat insect parts. No big deal. But you can't get away with it. They're not good, like, good for you. They're not that bad for you. They're just there. But guess what? Yeah, cat of protein. So. People, you guys associate with insects all the time. Can they bite? It, get, it, gets, yes. it, gets, it gets worse. That is? Ketchup. Insects. Ketchup. Ketchup made, ketchup made from? Tomatoes. Tomatoes, yeah. Now, tomatoes are a home for a lot of animals. A lot of insects. Insects. And animals, flea beetles, grasshoppers, and crickets live in and on that tomato. They don't get off or out in time. They get ground up for the rest of the tomato and made into ketchup. Here's the important part. Insects, insect parts tend to float, okay? Insect parts float. Let me set the situation for you. You guys go home. Your parents come home with a big order of french fries. So you go to the refrigerator, you pull out the bottle of ketchup, you open the lid, you squirt the ketchup out. What's the first little bit of ketchup like? It's kind of watery, kind of runny, right? Yeah, what do insect parts do? They float. Where are you going to find the insects floating? Where are you going to find the insects in the ketchup? On the top. Yeah, floating on the top. Here's where your parents actually have a useful purpose in life. You make sure your mom or dad always get the ketchup first. <laughs> Think about it. That's actually why there's a label on the top of the ketchup bottle. Not to let you know that it's great tomato taste. That's the highest thing floating in water right there. Insect determine our product flavor. <coughs> so, now that you realize that you all accidentally eat insect parts every once in a while, do you do you ever eat insect food on purpose? Do you ever eat it? Wait a second. You walk it. What you walking down the sidewalk? You walk down the sidewalk. You look down. There's a little insect having its lunch. 
You go to the insect, you take away its food and eat it yourself. Well, let's Have you ever taken food away from an insect and eaten it yourself? Are you sure? Uh-oh. What's that? Honey. Me by? Bees. That's an insect. This is insect food. Bees. I don't care. You still eat it. Oh, if you don't eat it, honey, they use it as a sweetener. So if you ever eat a candy bar, a cookie, or ice cream, you probably eat some honey every once in a while. It has a nice name called oh, honey. Made by bees. Bees have a problem with this stuff. Bye. Bees have a problem with this stuff. This is a thick, sticky, syrup-like liquid that they have to Bye. move around. They have to pick it up and move it to a brand new hive. If you're an insect, how do you move this stuff around? If you're an insect, how do you move honey? Around? They eat it. Exactly, you do. Most people think they just carry it in their mouth. Good different part of the hive, spit it out. They actually eat it. They have a special stomach. Oh, they no, get it in their stomach, Matt. and then they get to a different hive, they regurgitate it back up again. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so you call honey, I call insect spit. Yeah. Good for you, nutritious, all natural. It's something insects grew up. I didn't know what I was saying. It's also, really, it's also a really neat invention. You don't think of honey as an invention, but it's a way of preserving food. Imagine if you will. You guys get home tonight. Get yourself three cereal bowls. Bowl number one, you fill with honey. Bowl number two, you put a cheeseburger. Bowl number three, a cup of bananas. Let all three bowls sit on your kitchen counter for four months. Come back in four months. Which one can you still eat? The honey. Yeah. Just take four months with the cat here, dust off the top of it. Perfect piece of honey. Cheeseburger, bananas sitting on a counter for four months, and it look really bad. They have found this stuff in the pyramids of Egypt over 3,000 years old, and it was still edible honey. In fact, if I had a chance to eat it, I think I would, just to say I ate something that was 3,000 years old. <laughs> okay, I finally got you guys all interested in the insects. I should probably show you one, right? Yeah! Show me a cockroach. There you go. Oh, that's cool. Oh. What is that? I know what that is. It's an insect. Yeah, it's, 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 it's real. It's real. It's a real. Yeah, it's real plastic. I want to touch it. <laughs> okay, what makes this an insect? Six yes. legs. Six legs. Yeah, very good. You can never and you can never break the six leg rule. All insects have to have six legs. Also, insects usually have these things. Antennas. And wings. Although they're exceptions to the wing rule, not all insects have wings. Can anybody give me an example of a whole group of adult insects that have no wings? Whole group of adult insects with no wings. Yes, good answer. Ah, uh -huh, good answer. Uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. It's wrong, but it was a good answer. Exactly. Most of them. Exactly. So it was a pretty good answer. Whole group of adult insects without wings. Yes. Cheshires don't have wings. No, but it's got to be an insect. Whole group of adult insects without wings. Okay, hint. What is this? A flea. Fleas, yeah. Did somebody say dog? <laughs> no, you correct. I always get somebody to say dog. Please don't. Please don't have wings. But the one rule you can't break. How many of these? Six. six no more, no less, always six. No exception ever. Doesn't oh. cause you tear one off. Oh, oh, this cat. represents a what? Caterpillar. Caterpillar insect? Cat no. Yes. Yes, it is. Oh, yeah, what are all these? There's like way more than six legs. What's the one rule I said you can't break? How many legs on insect? Six. All insects have to have six legs. There's no exception to the six leg rule, but this is an insect with more than six legs. It explain this. Uh -oh. Yes. Um, peppers do, do only have six legs, but they do have leg like stumps. For the they also act like legs. So what does yes? Yeah, what does this turn into? Um, I, well, it, after metamorphosis, it turns into a butterfly. Very good. And turns into turns into an adult butterfly. Uh, an adult butterfly, butterfly would have how many legs? Six. Exactly. The six leg rule only counts if you're grown up. If you're not grown up, you don't have to follow the rules. In the insect world, don't try that at home. <laughs> Baby insects like caterpillars can have more than six legs or none at all. Those gross, disgusting maggots in your garbage are legless flies. Tell you turn to six legged flies. <sighs> okay. Now do I have you all interested in insects? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I'm not going to show you any. <laughs> I'll show you relatives of insects. Like so. Yep, and then they have eggs. You're close. Yeah, yeah the bottom one's a millipede, the top one's a centipede. We have both of these here. You probably have them in your homes. Yeah. They like dark, moist areas. So 
uh, basements, bathrooms, flower beds, and gardens. It's made of concrete. Have a, the ones we have around here are smaller. Centipedes about half the size. The millipedes we have around here are only about an inch and a half long. They're about the size, shape, and color of a lead to lead pencil. My my grandma used to call them holy polies because you poke them to grow up. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Millipedes. See this bottom one here? See the little rings on his body? Yeah. They're hard to see. Every ring, four legs. This guy has 200 legs. <laughs> Almost 200. He's probably missing about a dozen. They've been torn off. Once a, once the legs torn off, they don't grow back, and people go, "Oh, the poor thing." I go, "Who cares?" <laughs> right. It has 200 legs. He doesn't need it. He doesn't need all 200. If an animal wants to eat the millipede, they don't run up, grab a millipede's leg, break it off, eat the leg, the millipede crawls away. People go, the poor thing, I go, it doesn't make any difference. It's got 200 legs. I have two. I lose one of my legs, I'm going to walk funny. It loses one of its 200 legs, it'll take 199 steps, whip, it'll take another 199 steps. So it can afford to lose quite a few legs. You probably have these in your basement, especially the millipede. The little millipedes are crawling around your basement, bathroom, flower bed, guess what? <laughs> They're poisonous. What? You have poisonous animals crawling in your basement. <laughs> they contain cyanide, very deadly nerve poison. The only way you get poisoned by a millipede, though, you got to eat it. So, who's going to eat a millipede? <laughs> Nobody. But it's kind of neat. They contain a very deadly poison, cyanide. Want to taste some? Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah, please. <laughs> yeah, right. No. You've got to be helping your parents. Go home. Have your mom or dad get an apple. Take out the apple seed. Squeeze that apple seed with a pair of pliers. It smells. It's got a, fru it's got a fruity smell. It tastes. It's got a bitter taste. Apple seeds contain cyanide. Yes. It's a poison. Yeah, you worry about it? Yeah. You can detect cyanide parts for 10 million. You'd have to eat a couple garbage cans full of apple seeds to even get enough in there. So you can still taste it. It's no big deal. Ages. Sooner or later. Right now, I'm about to do it now. Okay. I think I'll show you my live animal. Oh, okay, first of all, some people think the animals are kind of creepy and crawly looking, which I guess they are. They might even be kind of scary looking, but they're pretty much harmless. They're not going to leave my lap. They're not going to jump off and bite your nose off. Right. Yeah. So, so, nobody, so nobody has to go. <laughs> um, they're pretty much harmless. Uh, so, I always get the same question. Every time I show my animals, I get the same two questions asked about them. So I'm going to answer the questions before I even get them asked. First question I get is, do they bite? Hi, do they bite? Yes, they do. Why would my animals bite? Yes. Defense. Yeah, protect themselves is a good answer. Another reason why you bite. So they can eat. Exactly. Who said eat? Very good. You're right. Most people don't think, why do they bite? To eat or protect themselves. There's actually a better reason why they bite. You know why they bite? Hunt. Because they got a mouth. Yeah. Oh, that's you have a mouth bite. <laughs> Second question I get is, Second question is, are my live animals poisonous? No. Yes, they are. <laughs> That's no big deal either. Just because something's just because, if you've got something's poisonous doesn't mean it's really you have to worry about it. In fact, something that's poisonous you don't think about is this. This stuff is poison. Water's poison. Right? Right? I just drank some water. It's not that poisonous. It would give it give it like eighty years, then it'll do the trick. Nope, it's poisonous. Oh. Water is a deadly poison. It takes multiple gallons, but it, it can die. You're, you're on the right track. Guess what? What I always tell people, okay, what happens if you try to sit in the bottom of a swimming pool for four hours? <laughs> you're going to come up dead and wrinkled. I you, drown, you drown in water. If you don't handle water properly, it's a deadly poison. You yeah. handle it properly? No big deal. My animal's poisonous? Yeah. Deadly? No. Harmful? No. Just poisonous. <laughs> No bug. Bring out the scorpion. This is a whole lot worse. Scorpion. Oh, my elbow. Woo! Oh! Oh, 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 snail, that is remember, cool. Remember, no bug. You're touching it? You're touching the tail? That's the only way to pick up a scorpion. How do you know? Because I don't know. Well, it can pinch you easily. Ah, oh, it's not going anywhere. I'm gonna call it. This is a whoa. This this is an Asian scorpion out of Africa. It's kind of a distant relative to an insect. What that? It does share some things in common with insects. It's got the jointed legs, the segmented body, 
the skeleton on the outside, but it's still a much more primitive animal. In fact, it'll actually, it doesn't work for, it'll actually glow. Yeah. Can I see? Whoa. Don't touch, just look. Don't touch, just look. Okay? I know that it glows. I know how. Okay, don't touch, just look. See how they glow? Status, can I tell you how I know it glows? How's that? Yeah. Okay. He wouldn't eat it. He used to worry about enough. You notice he's still got his stinger. He's still got his big claws. You guys got to back up a little bit now. A little bit play out. Oh, yeah, now, the thing is, the thing is with this guy, you notice he's still got a stinger and his big claws, right? Yeah. Well, the way scorpion's feet is a little different than most people realize. I need a, I need a volunteer. Woo! <laughs> Stand right there. No, he's not going to hold it. Just because you're scorpion food. What's your name? Dylan? Dylan? You're no longer Dylan. You're scorpion food. <laughs> I'm a scorpion. I'm gonna eat my food, which happens to be dill. Okay? Now I got a poisonous sting. You think I strike really I sting really fast and strike really fast? Nope. Watch what happens if I strike really fast to my food, which happens to be dill. Ow! You can hit like a bowling ball. You just broke my stinger. Most scorpions don't sting fast. What they do is they get a good grip of their food, which happens to be dill, and they grow. And they go, that's hard, that's hard, that's hard. Ooh, that's soft. Go find a soft spot. And then inject their poison. Also, I'm a poisonous scorpion. I don't want to use my poison unless I absolutely have to because it takes way too much energy to reproduce my poison. But guess what? <laughs> I don't have to. I got fake claws. I don't have to use my poison on Dylan, which happens to be my food. What I can do is I can just grab them and rip them apart with my claws because I got fake claws. Now, if you ever go down to Arizona and you see the little bitty ones, the little golden ones that have really small pinchers, they aren't very strong. Watch what happens now. I'm one of those. I got really small pinchers and I try to tear apart my food. Watch what happens. Ah, ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, we'll try to tear apart again. Do it again. Ooh, my claws aren't strong enough. I can't do it. So now I have to poison them. I just inject my poison. Just a second. You're not feeling well. You're not dead. dead. And I can eat you. <laughs> Thank you. You make good scorpion food. <laughs> the rule is, the rule is, the rule is, the bigger the scorpion, the less poison. The rule is, the smaller the scorpion, the more poison. That's the two rules. Don't follow me the rules. Because there's exceptions to both. Oh. Let's see what else do I have. Um, I'm going, wait, so, okay, let's see what's this one. This is another end. Whoa. What's it? What's in the plastic? Tarantula. Spider. Who said spider? Thank you. Who said tarantula? Me. Not a tarantula. What? That's not a tarantula. Okay. okay. You gotta listen carefully. Very all, sp spider. all spiders are no. All tarantulas are spiders. Not all spiders are tarantulas. This is okay. This is labeled tarantula. I'm gonna call it tarantula. You can call it tarantula. Is it a it's not a tarantula. Spider? No, it fits into a group of spiders. A true, a true uh, tarantula is about the size of my fingernail. That's what both spider found only in Europe. This is a spider that fits into a group of spiders called hairy megalomorphs, which makes sense because hairy megalomorph means big and hairy. This spider is big and hairy. Big and hairy. I'm going to show you George. George is 10 years old. Her name is George. I know it's a boy's name. What? Her name is George. She's 10 years old. She's the most gentle animal I have. She won't bite, she won't pinch, she won't sting me. Can we hold Although her? every once in a while she does something I don't really like. She eats people. Can I hold yeah, her? Yeah, she pees on me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, disgusting. Yeah, every once in a while. Can we hold her? No. Woo! Yeah, I knew it. Oh. I'm sure you want to hold her? I thought it was a cockroach on his name, George. Can I hold her? No. No. She wants to be soft and fuzzy. Have a good mother. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's George. She right now is terrified of that. Hi, George. She's looking for a place to hide. You know why? 
eyes. Okay, she's got eight eyes. Look that right there. She can see in all directions once. So you can see every single one of you guys. <laughs> yeah, but you can't see it very well. Your she's her eyesight so bad. You guys are just big fuzzy blobs. And you guys being big fuzzy blobs. She's worried about you guys being big hungry fuzzy blobs. And you all being big fuzzy hungry blobs. If she doesn't get away fast enough, you're gonna eat her. But this is George. She's about ten years old. I was hoping she kind of settled down. So it's coming down. And you can see why she's called a hairy megalomorph. She's big and hairy. Well, his hairs are rather sharp and brittle, and they're there to protect her. If an animal wants to eat her, more power to them. They can have her for lunch. But you eat my spider, you got to eat the hairs on her body. It's kind of like you guys eating a hot dog dipped in cat hair. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 you. In fact, some spiders, I have one spider it's called chilling rose hair. You see this round part right here? It's called an abdomen. See how hairy it is? My chilling rose hair will actually take her back leg rub up against an abdomen that's full of hair and throw hairs whichever are coming after her. Ew. Which makes sense because those hairs are like little bars, little harpoons. In fact, she's rubbed off so much hair on her back end, it doesn't look like this part, it looks like this part more. <laughs> <laughs> but it makes sense. Those hairs are like little harpoons, little needles. It's like somebody's chasing you. You're running as fast as you can. You're trying to get away. They're about to catch you. So what you do is you stop, you turn around, and you throw a handful of fish hooks in their face. It's going to slow them down, right? Same thing. In fact, when I'm done handling her, i got to watch out because I've got to wash my hands. Otherwise, those, the hairs that are breaking off will really make me itch. But this is George. She, she, she is a hairy megalomorph. George, settle down. I don't want to keep chasing you around. She's a, she's a, um, okay. She's kind of bigger than hairy than most, but she's still a typical spider. Like all spiders, what do spiders eat? Flies. Uh, flies. Yeah, that's yeah, good nice. answer. Very good answers. Yeah. yeah. Flies. Yeah. All spiders eat the same thing. Soup. All, all spiders. All spiders eat soup. Yeah. Yep. That's Think about it. She doesn't have teeth. She can't chew. Oh! So when I feed her a cricket, she grabs hold of the cricket, injects poison to the cricket, kills the cricket, then she injects more fluid in that cricket, dissolves it inside the cricket. When everything gets dissolved, the heart, the lungs, and the muscle tissue is all dissolved, kind of like into a cricket soup, she rips it open and sucks out inside. Cricket soup. The way she feeds, she takes the food inside her body. Imagine a handful of spider food. She takes the food inside her body, and for all practical purposes, spits on it. Waits for it to dissolve, then sucks it up. You guys ever do that? No. What? You never take a handful of food, spit on it, it, wait for it to get all slimy, then suck it up. I've never done that. I don't know it. Spiders can't How do you tell that? Well, they have What's this? Next time you eat a sucker, lollipop pops with ice cream cone. Think about it. What do you do? You lick it, you wait for it to get all slimy, then you lick it again, right? Yeah. You're eating it, you're eating it the same way a spider does. Your parts are digesting outside your body. George, I'm going to put you away because I tired of chasing you around. Yeah, Except before that, before I put her away, I'm going to show you her fangs. She's got two black shining fangs. Take a look. Uh, I can't. I'm oh, coming, yeah. I'm coming. I'm shamed. I'm shamed. That is really good. I didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah. oh, oh. How do you know if it's a girl or a boy? Okay, how do I tell? Oh. If it were a boy, these front two legs, about halfway down, I'm going to put her away because she's getting a little nervous. Is she really 10 years old or is her like 10 spider? It's very old for a spider. She is 10. How do you tell a boy from a girl? A, a boy spider halfway down the front two legs has a little, it's like a little tennis ball. To me, it would be right like a little fuzzy tennis ball. Yeah. It's called a clasper. Very important thing for a boy spider. Because when he shows up, when he goes up, to, most, most girl spiders are bigger than males. Females are bigger than males. Female spiders are going to do two things if you run into a male. They're either going to start a family or she's going to eat them. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. So he has two options. He comes to father or he comes lunch. What he has on his front legs are called clasters, like little tennis balls. What he'll do as quick as he can, he'll run up to her, push aside her front two legs, reach up with his two front two legs, and hook onto her fangs with those clasters. If he misses, he becomes lunch. <laughs> but that's George. But George, George, she does have a problem. My spider has a problem. Same problem you have. And I can prove it. You guys go home tonight. Go to your bedroom. Open the closet door to your bedroom. Open your closet. 
what's in your closet. But I'm not going to your place. You got bugs in your closet. <laughs> what's in what's in your clothes closet? Clothes. That's what they call a clothes closet. You got clothes in your closet. There are clothes in your closet you'll never put on ever again. Why? Because it's too small. Exactly right. You outgrow them. Or maybe you wear them out or damage them beyond repair. Most cases you outgrow your clothes, they don't go on anymore. They stay in your closet forever, right? She has the same problem. What I'm going to show you now is not a spider. This it's what used is to be not a spider. A spider. No, it wasn't the way thing we used to spider. It's not a dead spider. This is spider skin. She crawled out of her skin just like you know you crawl out of your clothes and don't fit you anymore. She shaded her skin. Exactly. Yeah. This is not a spider. This is spider skin. And the way she does it, she basically splits the skin off her back like this, then rolls over on her back and kicks the skin off. So that's what you're going to do. When you're done with lunch here, as soon as you go home, the first thing you do is you go right into your house, lay down in the middle of your living room floor on your back, and kick your shoes and socks off, straight up in your hair. People are going to say, what are you doing? You can tell your mom and dad, I'm shedding my clothes like spiders shed your skin. I learned it today. <laughs> spiders shed your skin. We also shed our skin, but we do it a little differently. The way we shed our skin, everybody go like this. Take your finger down and go like that. There, you just shed your skin. What? You just shed your skin. That's just a little bit of time. Since we're talking about skin, everybody look at mine. Now look at yours. Now look at mine. Then yours. Mine. 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 Okay. Who's is older? Yours. It is not. <laughs> Same age as yours. Everybody's getting three months old. The reason why mine's kind of dry, wrinkly, and blotchy looking, because I'm making skin cells now for just about 65 years, and they're kind of tired of doing it exactly the same way. But everybody's skin's the same age. You go home, your mom, your dad, your brother and sister, your weird Uncle Harold, all have the same age skin for less than three months. I go home and kick out my... <laughs> yeah, you remember the weird part. That's the typical kick for you. Remind me of my daughter. I should take off my shoes when I need to. Okay, let's see what else. I showed you that. I showed you that. That's pretty um, good. Now we find the more common one. Okay. okay, those are relative to insects. But i got to get back to insects. I'm an entomologist, by the way, so I have to. How do you tell one insect from another? How do you tell a grasshopper from a beetle from a butterfly from an ant? How do you tell them apart? How do you tell them apart? Well, a lot of insects bite. How do you tell them apart? Is yes. that a grasshopper? But knowing like those of you that I Okay, but I, I need three words. How do you tell one insect from another? Pugs. Like the different parts of the body. Close. You're close. I heard it. Color? Color's one answer. Color? And shape. Shape and length. Oh. Color, size, shape, size. size. Thank you. One really good answer, one so so answer, and one answer was absolutely awful. Your answer was terrible. But thanks anyway. <laughs> oh, size doesn't count. It's like a person. Big person, little person, one more than the other. So thank you for the bad answer. Color was just a little bit better. Most insects want to be camouflaged, so they're going to be tan, gray, brown, or green. Shape is the best. We have to shape almost anything. And that's what you were getting at. Shape of the antenna, shape of the legs, shape of the wings. First thing we look at those is the shape of the mouth parts. There's about half a dozen different types of mouth parts on insects. Grasshoppers and beetles have chewing mouth parts. Oh, they chew a little differently than we do. I'm going to borrow you one more time. Uh -huh. Okay. 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 The way we chew, we chew like this, right? Insects chew, but they don't chew this way. Insects actually chew sideways. People chew like this. Insects chew like that. Got that? People. Insects. People. Thank you. No, I was careful not to do that. Insects do a really good job of chewing, but they chew sideways. But not all insects have chewing mouth parts. There's an insect you're quite familiar with. No tongue, no teeth, no lip. It's got this for, it's got this for a mouth part. Mosquito. No. no. Fly. 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 Musca domestica, the common house fly. No tongue, no teeth, no lips. You see this heart-shaped purple thing right here? That heart-shaped purple thing is this. Oh. What's this? A sponge. Okay, right, yeah. And that's what it feeds with. So imagine, if you will, how the sugar right there. I want to pick it up with my sponge. Doesn't work. Fly comes along, wants to pick it up with this spongy mouth part. Also doesn't work. What do I have to do to get my sponge to work? Wet. wet. Get it wet, pick up the sugar. How does the fly get its spongy mouth part wet? It's it's wet. It is wet. Slime is quick. Yeah, but how does it 
That's close, but not quite. Sucking it up. How does a fly get spongy? I heard it. You. Yeah, right. You got sand signs in it. Come on. It does. Regurgitate. <laughs> <laughs> it okay, fine. It pukes. It hurls. It barks. It vomits. Every time a fly feeds, it brings up a stomach contact. Gets it all spongy. And then you can pick up the sugar. So you go home and you like your pizza so much now, your parents buy you pizza again this weekend. And they stand up at the kitchen table. And a fly comes to the window and lands on a crust of the pizza and walks across the mozzarella cheese and ends up on a piece of pepperoni. And you look over and you see the fly's spongy mouth part start to go up and down. Guess what just happened? And blue and right. It, and I have a pepperoni fly bar pizza. If that, ha if that happens, it's very important to do some of that piece of pizza. I'll give it to your parents, they'll never know the difference. <laughs> no. If you're sitting down this summer having a peanut butter sandwich and a glass of milk and a fly comes along and takes a drink and a bite, don't share. Okay. Okay, since they have a fly, do you ever sneak up and catch a fly? No. Nope. You ever sneak up and you ever sneak up and catch a fly so it can't see it coming? Nope. Impossible. Insects have these things. They're kind of unique to these are called compound eyes. They're not designed for watching TV, working on a computer reading. These are motion detectors. So the rule is if you can see part of the fly's eye, it can see you. Sneak up the fly from the front. Can you see the eyes? Yeah. Easy. How about from the back? Can you still see part of the eyes? Yeah. The top? Yeah. Bottom? Yeah. There's no place I can turn his head where you can't see the eyes. Yeah, but that means if you big catch big a fly, it's, sneaky, it's not because it didn't see you coming. It's because it wasn't a very smart fly. It's like, well, it was cold out. Oh, it's a hand. I don't have to move. <laughs> you want to catch a fly, though, there's a way of catching a fly. Imagine, if you will, there's a fly sitting right there. I know that fly is going to fly. That's why they call it that. Nine times out of ten, it's going to take off and do a tight curl on itself. Flies will almost take off and curl back. So if you want to catch it, Remember, the compound eyes, as soon as you move, it's gone. So if you want to catch a fly, you don't know where it is, you go where it's going to be. <laughs> okay, there's a fly sitting there. Compound eyes sees it coming. It does a tight curl and you can catch it midair. If you want to catch a fly, go where it's going to be, not where it is. <laughs> Seven years of college, that's what I remember. <laughs> also, you ever see a fly do this? You ever see a fly do this? Why does a fly want to keep its feet clean? So it can what? Taste stuff. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Most people don't realize that. Insects taste with their feet. You can't do that. Just okay, just imagine. We shut the lights off in this room. It's pitch black. There's a waiting pond right here. Full of jello. And you take your shoes and socks off. And it's pitch black. And you walk in and you stick your foot in the jello. It oozes up between your toes. And then you have to tell what flavor you stepped in. Can you do it? Great. You can't tell with your feet. Flies can. Flies taste with the feet. That's why they keep their feet. <laughs> Pretty good. That's the first one I've heard in about three years ago. Another insect mouth part. I don't have a model, but I got a picture of it. I think I have it. It kind of looks like this. There's an insect that uses this for a mouth part. Yes. Exactly. Pretty much works just like this. So a mosquito wants to suck your blood. She has three big problems she has to overcome. Three problems. Problem number one is this. Remember how you scratch before? Scratch a little harder. Anybody oozing blood? Nope. Nope. You couldn't get through your skin. You put much more force on your skin than a mosquito ever could, and you couldn't break through your skin. That's problem number one. How the heck does she get through your skin? Acid. She doesn't poke through your skin. She doesn't jab through your skin. What she actually does, nope, what she actually does is she uses this. She saws through her skin. In fact, the mosquito doesn't have one saw. She has two. She has, she has to tip her mouth parts. She has two saws. So she actually saws a hole in her skin. That solves problem number one. She's now sawed a hole in her skin. She pokes, pokes her mouth part through the skin, hits a blood vessel, starts sucking your blood. She runs into problem number two, blood pressure. Blood pressure is a lot like water pressure in a garden hose. What happens if you poke a hole in the garden hose? Water squirts out, right? Same thing when she hits a blood vessel, your blood pressure blows her mouth parts out. So what she does to solve that problem, she uses something a lot like this. Mm -hmm. oh my God, fish exactly. She actually anchors in with a fish hook like barb. Remember this for a little bit later because she can't pull out real fast. She actually hooks in with a fish hook like barb to hold her in place. That solves problem number two. Start sucking your blood. Or then problem number three. three. Same problem my, my mom had to me when I was like about two years old. When I was really little, I used to get food over my face. My mom would do something gross and disgusting. She'd spit out her Kleenex, sometimes just her finger, and do this. 
Yeah, it's gross. But it works. The Why saliva, yeah, but it, it works. The saliva dissolves the food. Mosquito does the same thing. She's sucking your blood. It dries in your mouth part. So she goes, <laughs> spits in your blood. That's why you guys itch or into a skill spit. So now you have an animal. Without your permission, it's sawed a hole in your skin, anchored into the fish hook like barb, which is hard to pull out, and spit in your blood. That's ruled by anyone's standard. You can't get even. How do you get even with a mosquito? It's not. That's way too fast. Remember, she's got fish hook like barbs that she hooks in. She can't pull out real fast. So here's a mosquito, and that's in your vein. She starts sucking your blood. What you do, you squeeze up your arm, you make a fist. You start moving your muscle. You not only increase your blood flow, but you're increasing your blood pressure. And you're pumping her full of more and more blood, and she can't pull out in time. And guess what happens? Pat! Yeah, she pops. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are going to have to try that. Yeah, you got to try that. <laughs> but that's about it. I'm about out of time. You see most of the stuff I've got. Um, oh, is it? oh, hey, anybody want to see a dinosaur? Yeah. yeah. Well, so do I, but they've been extinct for millions of years. Ah. Uh, I have, an animal been, again? I have an animal that's been around since before the dinosaur. Oh, yep. It's an animal sometime in your school career you will sing about. And when you sing about this animal, you will sing about it in Spanish. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La cucaracha. La da 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 That is Spanish for? Cockroach. Cockroach. <laughs> I'm going to show you a Madagascar hissing cockroach. It's oh, called a Madagascar hissing cockroach because it's from Madagascar. Big Island off the coast of Africa. And it? This is, well, this is a little one from Madagascar for a big container in my closet. And believe it or not, cockroach temperature is pretty cold in here. It may not hiss, but we will give it a try. Shh, guess it real still. Shh, it's going to hiss as we go. Oh, I smell bad too. Shh, listen. Got one hiss. Hiss! Try the other one. Hey, bite. Hear it? Hey, yeah. let's squeeze you all right in this room. Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Been around since before the dinosaur. Like they, make really good, they make really good pets. <laughs> oh, they make great pets. How many people have dogs or cats? Yeah, they meow, they bark, they shed, they poop in the backyard. My cockroach do none of that. Besides that, when I get tired of my little cockroach, I can just put them in the sidewalk and step on them. Oh. <laughs> I don't do that. He eats what you eat. Apples, pears, bananas, fruits and vegetables, cheeseburger. No, he eats what all counts want us. I'd rather feed him on cheeseburger. Um, Can I touch not, him? No. Why not? Because you touch me, he gets worried and falls. But just a cockroach. They don't, insects don't have brains like we do. They have like little nerve clusters. There's a little brain in the head that says eat. Okay, which makes that eat. There's another little nerve cluster between the legs that works the legs. That's the legs work. And there's another little nerve cluster right above the stomach that when the stomach is full, it says stop eating. We can actually dissect that one out. Take that one out. So the one that hit it says eat, never gets a stop eat command. So it keeps on eating and eating and eating. <laughs> and pretty soon, guess what happens? Eat the Yeah, it pops. <laughs> but they make, they make really good pets. I can do you guys a favor. Actually, your mom is home, you know? And you know, mom, good heavens, there's Mother's Day, there's Christmas, there's her birthday. You always gotta get your mom something and you run out of stuff to get her. What you can do is you can stop by North Dakota State University Entomology, we'll get you a cockroach, you can wrap it up really nice, and then you give it to your mom as a birthday present, Mother's Day or Christmas. And she can wear it as a roach brooch when she visits her relatives. <laughs> Does she have one? No. Not yet. See? Perfect gift. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, but that's, but that's about it. You've seen all the gross, disgusting stuff I have. Uh, what's another name for honey? Bees. Bees, or bee bark, yeah. Who gets the ketchup first? Bees. Mother, mom, yeah. or dad, yeah. You got the important stuff down. I want to actually have and I've got to Pretty much got everything. I showed you everything that I got. I'm done. I can't. Thank you very much.